today's video we're looking at another interesting LED project. For this build, we are revisiting the WLED matrix light, but this time, instead of arranging the LEDs in a pixelated grid frame, we'll be blurring the lines and creating a seamless matrix light display. I'll walk you through each step of the process to explain how I built it so you can understand how to create it for yourself. So let's begin. The thing that inspired this project for me was seeing some old windows that were going to be thrown away. I wanted to find a way to repurpose the glass from the windows into some kind of LED light project. I took apart a window which was made up of several smaller panels and began by cleaning them off. Working with glass in an LED project like this was a new experience for me. Since glass can be difficult to work with, you might want to substitute these glass panels with acrylic or plexiglass as an alternative material. Acrylic or plexiglass can be easier to modify into different sizes and shapes. Once I had them cleaned off, I grabbed some scrap wood and cut it to the same shape of the glass, plus an extra inch on each side. After sanding the wood down, I laid them out on the table with the glass. I decided to rework the wood and add a beveled edge going all the way around the outside. I found a nice shade of blue paint and used that on both pieces of wood. While that was drying, I started experimenting with how to drill a hole into glass on the old windows. From what I saw online, they recommended a piece of electrical tape to stop the bit from sliding around when starting the hole. And they also recommended spraying some water while drilling. Here you'll see me put too much pressure towards the end which cracked the glass. I was able to get it on the second attempt though, with less pressure and more patience. Now that I had the technique down, I felt comfortable with moving on to the actual panels. I took some measurements and made one hole on the top and one hole on the bottom around one inch in. To diffuse the light and hide the LEDs behind the panels, I used white spray paint. I only used it on the one side of the glass that faces the LEDs. I had a slight issue with the paint chipping away from handling it too much, so I had to come back later and touch up those flaws with the spray paint again. To hold the glass panel above the LEDs, I am using these 3 quarter inch by 1 inch blue stainless steel standoff screws that I got from Amazon. I had to modify the holes on the glass after receiving them since I found out they were larger than I had initially calculated. Now it's time for the LED lights. I took measurements to mark out how far I could go with the LEDs. I began with 3 rows with 46 LEDs per row. I glued the LEDs to the wood using the sticky backing and soldered the rows together. With that done, I attached the glass panel and tested it out. I immediately realized that three rows of LEDs were not going to be enough to achieve the look I was going for. As you can see, there are some shadow lines running through the light. So I had to go back and add another two rows in between the other ones. That brought the total number of LEDs to 230. When I plugged it in this time, I saw the difference right away, which was exactly how I wanted it. I finished building up the second one exactly the same way, and attached some D-ring hooks to hang them on the wall.
To hide the wires, I drilled a small hole and ran them through the wood to the back. If this was being built as a standalone light, then at this point, I would carve out a section of the wood to place the microcontroller, similar to how I did for my Electriangle logo build. However, in this case, I'm going to use a 3-pin connector here and connect these lights to the same microcontroller on my logo build. I have plans later to conceal the wires on the wall between the builds. After programming the ESP8266 with the WLED firmware, I realized at this point that I wasn't able to use this microcontroller because there wasn't enough storage. So I had to switch it out and put an ESP32 which had much more storage for these LEDs. And with that final swap out complete, I was done. Now here's the final footage of some of the presets I made for it.